Hey everybody, Eric Broom, working on module five, understanding my community, which is Easton Valley School District, home of the Riverhawks. So let's start diving in here. Customs and traditions. So we were founded in 1870, um, and it is Preston, Iowa, which is where the high school is located, and then we have to go about four miles east to Miles, Iowa, which is where the elementary is. Both really small towns, really close to the Mississippi. Um, if you know um, bigger cities on the east side of Iowa, so we are below Dubuque and above Davenport in Jackson County. We're a 1A school, eight-man football. We don't have wrestling, soccer, tennis, or a home track. Uh, although we do have track programs and uh, make state appearances in multiple events the past three years, uh, they do not have a home track. Uh, there's a lot of agriculture and manufacturing in the area, so a lot of students do go and do trade school and move on to those areas. Uh, we have a population just under a thousand. It became Easton Valley in 2013 uh, with the merger of Preston and East Central. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty young school as far as that goes. 98.2% white, 62% German, predominantly Catholic. We just had this referendum pass this spring, um, and we're handling those changes really well. Um, I'll talk more about that as we go on. Preston Days. So these are just a few things that uh, happen here that are big events. Preston Days just was last weekend or two weekends ago. It's kind of like a fair environment, so there's a lot of activities going on, a lot of beverages, um, a lot of excitement, you know, parades, stuff like that. Um, homecoming week is big. Uh, the community also really is invested in homecoming week, so that's awesome. Uh, and then state fairs and county fairs are very popular among everybody here. Population characteristics. Uh, so there's just some education levels there, some percentages, some percentages in age. I just took the top top three percentages, put those up. Um, this enrollment was actually uh, 2014 or uh, 2013, one of those. Um, so down below is what we're at currently. Um, elementary's at 275, high school's at 230, and then uh, your percentage is on free and reduced. Median household income of 50. And uh, our male-female ratio was right down the middle. Communication channels. So we have our Preston Times. Um, these are all the, our newspapers. Makoka, again, that just just west of us, 20 minutes or so. And then Quad Cities is also big as far as communication with us. Uh, Quad Cities is like the Rock Island, Davenport area. Um, and that's down below us, about 45 minutes. Uh, local radio. Um, and then big athletic events. Um, we do streaming. <laughs> So we stream uh, live through our, just like a channel he does around here, just a local channel. Um, and then on the radio as well, we stream all the big events. Uh, we have no issues with foreign language. Again, very little diversity. So like, um, predominantly white. So we really don't have any language barriers or uh, situations with that. Uh, we have our EV website. We have our EV Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we email a lot, whether it's uh, just to school staff or um, a reach out to the community. And the coaches use a lot of different apps uh, to communicate with their kids. Um, I use GroupMe, I think, with baseball. Uh, small town, easy communication. You know, if, if someone doesn't know something, uh, usually the first person you reach out to is going to have that answer. Community groups. A lot of these uh, other people had your Lions Club, uh, your Boys and Girls Club, your Knights of Columbus. Knights of Columbus does some stuff with our basketball teams. Um, the Boys and Girls Club and the Lions Club help us out with uh, gates at uh, athletic events. Um, the we Westside Park Committee, as well as the Preston Park Committee, both do a great job um, fundraising and improving uh, the, the town. We have three parks, and they are pretty incredible for how small the town this is. Um, I had a friend come up from a, who lived in, or went to a 3A school and he was 
you know, saying how awesome it'd be to have parks like that in their town. So it's, it's really awesome that we have that opportunity. Uh, and then banks, um, some of the local banks, uh, I'm working right now and hoping they can run concession stands at our football games, maybe basketball. And then local restaurants, um, there's always people, um, a lot of the same people actually meeting together for breakfast or coffee in the mornings and uh, lunchtime meetings and so forth at the local restaurants. Leadership, uh, so there's our, our school leadership. Tony Johnson is also our football coach. Uh, he's the high school principal. Patty Schmidt's the elementary principal. Chris B is the superintendent school board administration team, which the administration team is going to be, we have a technology guy, two accounting, finance, um, and then facilities director, transportation director, and secretaries. Um, all of great team, awesome team to work with. Uh, and then our community leadership, our mayor, our city council, five members, chief of police, and booster clubs. Uh, Scott Heyer has been awesome. He does a really good job publicizing uh, stuff in the community through Facebook. Um, so people get a lot of information from him, not only about uh, the police department, but he posts interesting stuff that's going on um, just in the community in general. Community leaders characteristics, um, just a few things I put down for that. I think uh, they're so they're reliable, trustworthy, available to the community. Um, they're involved outside of their own circle, so you know, they don't, they don't just go to the, their meetings and disappear after that. They're at events. They're constantly out and about um, talking to people. I think they're available to the community, although I know some people um, are not so comfortable bringing up issues to them. But for the people that really, really have something they want to have their voice heard about, then they're there. They're available. Um, they have a growth mindset, I would say, like that referendum we've passed. Uh, um, we're always trying to improve our curriculum, um, our teachers, our professional development, um, and then not only inside the school, but we're also, we just bought new scoreboards for all the sports, and I'm currently working on improving our bleachers. Um, our bleachers are probably our worst looking um, outer appearance in the school, so I'm gonna hopefully fix that up over the summer. Um, here's just some stats from economic conditions, uh, your unemployment, your tax, uh, your average household, um, average average house values 107. Again, that nearest real grocery store is about 20 minutes as far as like Walmart. The highest industries are manufacturing, ag, warehouse construction, and highest occupation, sales, production, maintenance, repair, transportation. So again, those uh, a lot of trade school. Um, students that we ha that we have go on for that. We never really have any transportation issues. You can really walk anywhere you need to go. Um, we have we do have uh, transportation on Wednesdays that help kids get to church. Um, so that's awesome. That helps with that school community relation. Political party. Uh, just a few stats. I thought it was interesting that our Democratic Party went from fifty five, dropped twenty percent um, from that twenty twelve to twenty sixteen. I thought that was interesting. And then that referendum, taxes raised a little bit. Um, failed the first two times, um, which is kind of rough. Uh, the community wasn't really for it. I don't think that the information was put out in a great way. So I think they were kind of confused, didn't have all the details they needed or wanted. Excuse me. And uh, so this third time, it was pushed. You know, emails constantly at every event. There was boards up that had details and pictures and... Um, then they did a few, a few big events that were based around um, the referendum. Uh, school board has a large impact on the political, on the politics, anyways. Um, school funding, we've never had any issues with that. And uh, just like somebody else said, uh, there's always politics in the small community. You can't really get away from that. I would, I would go as far as saying, in any community, there's just going to be those politics within the school. Um, it's just hard to to not have that. It's just on us to know. Um, when to get involved and when not to, you know, what, what, what's important and what's not. Social tensions, there's not a lot. You know, there's some parent clicks, but everyone, everyone's got that. You know, you got your sport, the parents that go to sports um, that are clicked together, the farmers that are kind of more clicked together, and those that are more involved in the school. Like if you're in the booster club and you're probably with some friends in the booster club, and that ends up being kind of clicky. So 
Um, some social media posts, I've only seen a few since I've been here from teachers that were inappropriate. Um, only one real big one blew up last year from a student. Um, other social tensions is, you know, from my perspective, hiring and firing coaches, there's always people that are upset about the decision and then there's always people that are happy about it. Um, that just happened with our girls varsity basketball coach, actually. We have some alumni that feel that they can still use facilities whenever they want, so that's something we have to keep an eye on. And uh, there was an issue years and years ago before me with a neighboring school just down the road, a couple miles, um, with finances and a special ed um, financial situation, and um, we still can't play sports with them. I think it's this year is our last year where we're not playing sports with them. I'm not sure. I think it's, I think it's kind of a joke. Um, just teaching kids to hold grudges, I think. So hopefully we get past that. Sources of information just depends on what type of information you're looking for. Um, athletic information at booster meetings, more of the community um, stuff at board meetings, newspapers, school outreaches, social media. Just depends what you're looking for. Um, but it's all out there. I think we can do a little bit better of a job as a school pushing stuff out. Um, but we do a pretty pretty decent job, I'd say. Just the power structure, um, again. I just put that because in this small of a town, there's about three or four big last names that have been here for ages. So sometimes there's that feeling of entitlement. Um, yeah, that's interesting as someone newer here, just to see that and the, the dynamic of it. Not a lot of multicultural issues, very little diversity, small gap of SES. Church is important to most. I just mentioned the relations on Wednesdays, how we help out with transportation. It'd be a learning curve for me going to a bigger school with high SES. So if that ends up happening, I'll definitely have some stuff to learn and questions to ask. Um, in my personal opinion, we have good support. You know, some question the decisions, but you know, like that referendum, obviously there was a lot of questions on that. Um, even on scoreboards, you know, people question it. Like, what do we really need a new scoreboard if that one works? But, you know, they don't understand the, the in-depth details of it all. But I would say overall we we have good good public views of our school, which is awesome. Um, yeah, we have our school surveys that go to the staff. We have the community surveys that go out the, to everyone else. Um, community comes and gives opinions at board meetings, and obviously there's a lot of hearsay communication where one person might hear something at a board meeting and takes it out, and it just kind of blows up into the community. Um, so that can be rough sometimes. And this is my school. Top left is elementary on that one right there that's sticking out in the black shirt. Over here on the top right is our elementary that is completely torn down right now. They're just starting to rebuild. Um, to the left is still the gym that stays there, but all this is gone. And then our high school, that's a new area right there. I think it was built three or four years ago. Um, and they're adding more on with this referendum uh, in the back right, with, um, doing some ag classrooms and science classrooms. So that's our school. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it was, it's, I struggled a little bit with this video, um, just with some of the information and how to how to really give details about it. I guess it's a little different for me. Um, hopefully, it turned out all right, and hopefully, you enjoyed it somewhat. All right. Thanks.